I'm Kirby Allison, founder of The Hanger Project. And here at The Hanger Project, we love to help the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. Uh, earlier this year, I had an opportunity to go down to Austin, Texas and visit with Lee Miller from Texas Traditions. He's easily one of the most renowned, preeminent custom boot makers around these days. And he is a legend in his own right here in Texas. I had an opportunity to visit him to commission my first pair of custom boots through Lee Miller. And the first part of that process was going down and having him take detailed measurements of my feet. You know, based in a small, humble workshop off of South Congress Avenue in Austin, Texas, Lee Miller is not just making boots for country music legends and Texas oil men, uh, but also for ordinary people like you and me. Lee Miller is an absolute pleasure to work with, and one of the things that really struck me is his humility and commitment to the craft. And speaking with Lee, he is as passionate about boot making and about craftsmanship today uh, as he probably was whenever he begun his career. And it's one of the things that I've really appreciated about him was his humility, his genuineness, and just his true commitment to craftsmanship. And so in going down and having my measurements taken, uh, it absolutely blew me away because uh, it was one of the most thorough and detailed processes of having my measurements taken that I've ever experienced. And so in this video, we are going to show you the full process of Lee taking measurements. And he actually walks you through each step kind of explaining why and what he's doing so that you can better understand that. And so this is quite a long video. I believe it's almost 45 minutes, but we didn't want to cut anything from the process. We really wanted to have the entire process available to you through this video so that you could see everything that he's doing and really understand uh, the purpose of his measurements and his process. So enjoy this video. If you have any questions about this process, feel free to ask them in the comments section below. I'll try to get back to all those questions personally. And lastly, I hope you're able to enjoy this process as much as I did. Lee, nice to see hey, you. Nice to see yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for coming. Oh, sure. Thank so, you for coming into the shop. You know, it's so exciting to finally be back. Um, you know, I've been, I guess, looking forward to finally getting a pair of boots started for years. It seems like. So, okay. Well, we'll um, we'll we'll, so let's, we'll do a good job for you. Yeah. So the first the first step is going to be taking measurements, right? So yeah, absolutely. So that that's the beginning of making a pair of boots is just measuring your feet. So um, I'm going to spend some time with you. We'll we'll go through the process. And then after that, it's just uh, setting up the last and taking it from there. Okay. So, um, well, great. Anyway, Bob. so go ahead and remove your shoes. And All then right. the socks you're wearing today, Kirby, are those the socks that you might wear with your boots? Yeah, I mean, it's a pair of dress socks. Is okay. that? I mean, do people wear different socks with their boots? I don't, uh, it's all, I don't own a it's, pair. It's so. all personal preference. Really? Uh, some customers like a thin sock. So I wear a heavy sock, but it's all, it just all comes down to what you like. Yeah. Um, the thicker the sock, obviously, the more padding. Really? But, okay. Uh, but, um, okay. Uh, so, um, do you have any, do you own any boots, Kirby? You know, I don't own any boots. This is my first pair. I do have a, a bunch of dress shoes, of course. Uh-huh. Um, okay, so but this will be your first pair. First pair. Wow, okay, well. It's a privilege. <laughs> do you have any issues with getting anything to fit, Kirby? <clears throat> you know, the biggest issue I have with fit is I've got kind of a high instep right here okay and so i've got a bone just kind of at the top of my foot uh -huh. and that you know if anything produces discomfort right. in my shoe that's it yeah okay other than that it's so but other than that i uh -huh. you know have a pretty and so straight if, if you were to buy something just off the shelf what would you wear in terms of size like a nine a nine and what about a width like uh, a, just standard a standard width? D. okay so a nine d shoe okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the comments that you make mm -hmm. so that I know to pay attention to that. So, for instance, you feel like you have a high end step, yeah. and, and you can you'll sometimes get pressure on that. Yeah, especially towards the end of the day. Sure. So as as I work on your order, Kirby, the things that you tell me I'm going to be mm -hmm. focusing on, um, and I'll make some notes too as to what I see. What I'm looking at when I look at your foot, Kirby, is just trying to determine the characteristics of your foot. So you have a high arch, a high arch, you have a high instep, your, fo your foot is, is fairly thin, and so that means that anything that's tight is going to hurt you. Okay. Um, and so uh, w because there's not much padding on your foot, like somebody had a very fleshy foot, mm -hmm. then you could squeeze and the customer wouldn't, feel it. wouldn't really feel it, probably would even like it. 
Um, it, a lot of times what, what, when you shake someone's hand, basically you're shaking their, you're touching their foot mm -hmm. because the hand and the foot are similar in terms of how they're, how your body is made. Okay. So you have your, your handshake, if it's a, if it's a fleshy hand, mm -hmm. the foot will be similar. So when you're, when really when you're meeting somebody, I had a professor tell me that once, huh. and it's actually true. Now whenever you shake someone's hand, you're thinking you're, of their foot. <laughs> well, you're supposed to, <laughs> if you have your act together. Part of the fitting. Yeah, and so for instance, you have a, a high arch, a high instep, and you have a straight heel. Okay. And so there, those are all things that, um, that I'm looking at, they go, they go together as a package. And so those are the kind of notes that I'm gonna be making as a description of your foot. Um, so the high instep, you would build it up. The arch would be support and in the insole. Yeah, I mean. And then what about the straight heel? I mean, how does that change? Well, you just want to make sure that, it, like for instance, if something had too much cup in the back, okay. it would hurt you. Okay. And so it's really, it's just, it's a description of what the lash should look like. The lash should have a high arch. The lash should have an instep that's similar to your foot. Um, and, and all of the stuff that I'm going to do is going to show me that. Mm -hmm. Uh, these notes just kind of highlight it. Yeah. And I'm going to use a Brannock device, and I'm, you're just going to remain seated. There you go. Okay. And so you'll do a Brannock device, and the Brannock device is going to give me a total length, and then it's also going to give me a heel to ball. So total length, you're actually really a 10. And then heel to ball, which is what the critical part is, that's for the fitting. Looks like you're a nine and a half. So all that means is that you have long toes and you're shorter this way. Okay. And we'll yeah. do that on each foot. And so where the shoe should flex is the, is the, the it, heel, it, heel yeah, to ball. Yeah, you always, whenever you fit, you always fit heel to ball. So once again, Kirby, you're a 10 in terms of length. And the Brannock device is pretty accurate. Um, it gives you a starting point. So if you were to fit me in a pair of off-the-shelf boots, you'd fit a nine and a half? Nine and a half, yeah. Because that's, that's what you are heel to ball. So I guess I'm a nine UK. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to do, and we will do this foot first. Let's see, there you go. And I'm gonna set your foot there, and I'm gonna, there you go. And so I'm just gonna have you stand up, Kirby, and just stand normally and try not to move equal weight on each foot. So we'll do a side profile. So this is all this information that I'm taking, this two-dimensional information is all going to be used to create the last. So now we'll trace, do a border outline of the foot. And once again, I'm using a tracing device. really kind of getting around those toes. Yeah, and I'm also pressing on the toes to make sure that I get full extension. And then we'll get the center of the big toe, the center of the small toe, the fifth metatarsal, and the beginning of the metatarsal, which is here. And then over here, the first joint. And then we'll do an inner weight-bearing line. And what's that? That is really just where your foot is touching the, the paper. And that was something that Charlie Dunn did that really you didn't see a lot of bootmakers doing. So Charlie didn't use an ink print. He used the pencil just to give him I'll be using both. Now we'll get a total, total length. So you kind of you reference those two. Yeah, every, <coughs> everything that kind I'm of doing. You triangulate is, it together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's all connected. So we'll do a total length standing, and then go ahead and have a seat, please, and just leave your foot right where it is. There we go. And then we'll use the contour gauge. This is kind of interesting. This is something that I first saw in 1976 being used to measure. John Wayne. 
Oh, really? Yeah, I, okay. I, I graduated from school in 1976 and bought an Esquire magazine because it showed John Wayne being measured for cowboy boots. And there I saw the contour gauge being used for the first time. And this is really a, a very important tool. It's going to show me if I was to see what your foot looked like at the straight ball, this is what your foot would look like. And so the last should replicate that. So this little bit of information is critical. So there's your foot, mm -hmm. and you can kind of see the shape. So yeah. this is how tall that joint is. This is how broad it is. So I'm going to make a copy of that. Excuse me. I saw John Wayne having his foot measured that way. And then when I came to work for Charlie Dunn, he was yeah. using it. OK. And really? so, yeah, and so uh, it's really, it's a great, it's an easy tool to get. I mean, they sell this at any hardware store. And again, it's just about triangulating. Yes. And so what points on the foot do you do that? You did that at the? Straight ball. Straight ball. Yeah, so that's going from the first joint mm -hmm. to the, the fattest part of the little toe. OK. So that's a straight ball. Yeah, so everything all is connected. And it all has to do with giving, your, giving you um, a good fit. So we'll do the same thing to the other foot. And so the straight ball, I guess, where the foot flexes, I mean, is affecting kind of the way the foot feels like it balances on the, or the shoe, the way the shoe feels like it balances on the foot. Right. Because I've had pairs of shoes before where I feel like the balance is off on one of the shoes because the flex point might be a little off. Interesting, yeah. Well, if we make the last match your foot, mm -hmm. then we're there. And that's the whole goal, yeah. is to get the last to be the same as the foot. Okay, we're gonna do the exact same thing here, Kirby. Go ahead and stand up, and stand with equal weight on each foot. So everybody who measures is gonna do it a little bit different, and they're all gonna use just different things that they feel that they need to do the work that they're trying to do. So I'm doing this really just to get the information that I'm looking for. In order to build the last. Exactly. How has your measurement techniques kind of changed or evolved um, over your career? In the beginning, you know, of course you're starting from zero and you don't know anything. Um, and, uh, and, and then at, in, in, in school, uh, you're, you learn very basic information. Uh, Charlie Dunn was a big help to me in terms of getting me started. He, he was known as a fitter, and so he was doing things that I'd never seen anyone do before. Like what? Uh, like uh, the, the weight-bearing line, um, the contour gauge, uh, things like that. Paying attention to, I, I'm gonna show you in a second, Kirby, something that you know was, is really important in terms of uh, making a pair of cowboy boots, and you'll, you'll see like uh, some people will, will, will measure the foot with a tape measure while, the, while you're seated. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure your foot in the air. And so you'll get a different end result. A lot of people will do it with the foot resting on the, on the table. And then with the foot in the air, you're getting in a sense a truer measurement. And more reflective of what the lash should actually be. And but so, that's a measurement of the foot not under load? With, yeah, with non-weight bearing. So, so right now you're full weight bearing. And most shoemakers and, and some boot makers measure semi-weight bearing. And I'm going to measure you. So I'm taking tracings of your feet, full weight bearing. Then the contour gauge is taken semi-weight bearing. And then all the girth measurements will be taken non-weight bearing. Hmm. And so you get, a, you get a good picture of the foot that way. So go ahead and have a seat. Just leave your foot right where it is. And we'll do the contour gauge again. So this is taken right at the straight ball. Now how do you see people's feet evolving? So like I'm 34. Uh-huh. You know, you I'm investing in a pair of boots that you know I hope to wear for three, four decades. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, how will my foot change and you know, will at any point we have to come and readjust, make any adjustments to the boot, or? Um, as, as you grow older, you know, it, it is just a question of gravity. Gravity. And because your feet 
your whole body rests on your feet. Your feet will go through changes as you age. Uh, with certain feet, they'll grow longer. With certain feet, they'll grow wider. And those are the kind of things that you can adapt to. Um, uh, I think I was initially an eight and a half as a young adult, and now I'm a, now I'm a 10. This is just basically a bridge. Mm -hmm. And so as the bridge collapses slightly, which it will, um, your foot will lengthen. But somebody with a very high arch will not see much in terms of lengthening, they'll see more in terms of spreading. Oh really? Okay. So it really is foot type. How much does having a pair of you know, bespoke shoes, you know, like if you're always wearing bespoke, not always, but wearing bespoke, primarily bespoke shoes or bespoke boots, mm -hmm. Do you find that the shape of the foot, because you have a more precise fit, doesn't change as much as if exactly. you were wearing ready to wear? Exactly. Uh, you can take a healthy foot and you can destroy it by wearing something that doesn't fit. And uh, the foot will go through profound changes just to adapt to the space that you've put it in. So yes, if something fits you, it's going to be supportive. There are people who believe that we should just be barefoot. But this, if this is a structure that does change with time, it makes sense to go ahead and to wear something that will support it and not uh, allow it to break down uh, unnaturally. So you, you can take a healthy foot and create an unhealthy foot simply by wearing something that doesn't yeah. fit. And what's, what's worse at? Uh, if one is worse than the other, a, a shoe that's too large and there's too much room, or a shoe that's too tight, or well, the, the common what, what are the worst characteristics of fit? Well, the common thought is that you always fit long and you fit narrow, and that would be the best in terms of preventative. Okay. If you fit short and wide, that would be the best way to hurt your feet. Okay. So really, when in doubt, go long and go narrow. Go narrow. Um, so as long as you do that, you'll get proper arch support. So go ahead and cross your legs so that one foot is over the other and your foot's in the air and just kind of bring it down. There you go. So, you know, we talked about some of the differences in, uh, in you know, in boot making and shoe making. And, and so this is one of the things is I, now your foot is non-weight bearing. And so because of that, I'm going to get the, the smallest possible measurement that I could get. And the tape, the function of the tape is The just function of the tape is just to mark points of reference and everything will be recorded. So this is the short heel. And of course, how you pull the tape is critical. You just don't want to do anything to the tape, just have a natural measurement, which is what I'm trying to achieve. And this is just a position point. So that's a position point from which all other measurements are taken? And that's just a position point from what from where these measurements will be taken. It's a reference point for me. So what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start measuring your foot, Kirby, as we descend and go towards the toe. And I'm gonna be making notes of any changes or how it changes. And so as you're validating the measurements on the last, you're checking this measurement and yep. you do the same measurement on the last to make sure that they... These are all reference points. Okay. And so I'm trying to go off of specific bones. As, as, and if you've looked at the tracing, you'll notice that there are certain reference points marked. And those are all bones. And so we're measuring really from, for the most part, bone to bone. And you've had your feet measured, Kirby, by a lot of different people? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, three. Three. And have you noticed just, is that three counting me or three others? Uh, three shoemakers plus you. Okay. And have you noticed that those three shoemakers did it all differently? You know, they all do it differently. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, some take more measurements than others. And then, you know, I think what's been fascinating for me with shoemaking is to see who who is it that does an intermediate fitting and who doesn't? And then what's uh -huh. that intermediate fitting like? So, right. you know, You're John, John Lobb London goes trial. straight to finish. Oh, is that right? You know, okay. and they... I didn't know that. I've never seen their measurements, but they uh -huh. just claim to have the experience to be able to take it straight to fitting wow. or, or straight to finish. Cool. You know, Cleverly does an intermediate fitting. Uh -huh. Foster's does an intermediate fitting. Right. You know, Dimitri Gomez in Paris does an actual trial shoe that he cuts open. You know, to actually see where the uh -huh. shoe's fitting, okay. or where the foot's fitting in the shoe. Uh-huh. This is the waist of the foot, Kirby. Okay. 
and the waste is that natural hollow. Yeah, I've, I've found that if I pay close attention to this part of it and take lots of information, and then if I pay, pay close attention to the next step, which is making the last, uh, I generally take two days to make the last. Okay. And so because I, spent, I really slow it down and, and I take careful measurements and then I carefully interpret it, because of that I generally get better end results, eliminating the need for a trial fitting. Mm -hmm. um, you also want to make sure that the person who measures the foot is the person who makes the last. Okay. Because every, there's all these slight little variances and when you start interjecting other people in it then you get different interpretations. So it's really tough, you know, so I measure your feet, I set up the last. How soon after you it take the measurements to do the last? I could, I could, it could, I could do it three years from now. Okay. It wouldn't change anything. Okay. The only thing that would change would be maybe your foot. Your foot, yeah. But, hope, but if you keep your weight stable, um, then nothing should change. So if you notice I'm making measurements, I'm making points on the tape as to where everything crosses over, and the tape is going to get saved. And so will you put this tape on the last? No. The, the tape is just going to be measured, okay. but it won't be put on the last. So I have one more point on the foot that I'm going to take, which is the straight ball. And if you remember, I did the contour gauge mm -hmm. of the straight ball. So now I'm taking a girth measurement of that same point. And both of these things are going to work together. But that's the straight ball is more comfort of the toes. Okay. of the four part. Okay, so there we go. This is done. The only thing we're lacking really is a leg measurement on this. So we're going to do the same thing now to the other foot. Oh, excuse me. So seeing that done, Kirby, I mean, did you did you notice things that I was doing that maybe other people yeah, hadn't Yeah, so I don't done? see many people do the, the, uh, the vertical the, the measurement side profile. of the foot. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, I've never seen someone do the non-weight bearing uh -huh. measurements. Yeah. It's always the weight bearing. Yeah, semi weight. Semi. Bearing. Yeah, semi so this is semi, semi and this is non. Well, I've seen yeah. semi and full. Yeah. Um, but never non. Never non. Yeah. So what's interesting is, and this is this is actually true. If I take your foot measurement here and I get nine inches, mm -hmm. and then I bring it down here, I may get nine and three eighths. But normally shoemakers will go ahead and reduce that measurement to achieve their ultimate goal, which unbelievably is this. Non-weight bearing. Non-weight bearing. So it's kind of like you're going in the back door to get to the front yeah. door. This way we're just going to the yeah, just front door. Yeah, just But, um, and the other thing you see is a bunch of scribbling, so they'll like, you know, yeah. you know, so, so like the right. high, you know. They're making notation. End step, you know, right. they'll scribble it on the And, and on if, the if you notice, I haven't done anything, no scribbles. Yeah. Uh, and that's because there's nothing to note. Uh, everything, uh, every, everything is just going, there's nothing glaring. Mm -hmm. uh, so if this was a tall joint, um, I would make a note of that. Okay. If this was protruding uh, greatly, I would make a note so of that. So you would scribble. Oh yeah, bit. absolutely. Okay. But in your particular case, nothing has been... Uh, um, Super out of there. Yeah, nothing has been, nothing is really sticking out. Yeah, nothing's sticking out. <laughs> That's a good way of putting yeah. it, I guess. So once again, we're going back to the straight heel. I'm sorry, the, um, the, the short heel. Now the short heel is not used in, in really in shoemaking. It's used not, not in this manner. It's used in a pull-on boot. So a pull-on boot would be like, um, you know, like, like a riding a boot? Riding or? boot, cowboy boot, uh, anything, anything you pull on, you don't lace. Generally it has to do with heel height also. Um, so this is 13 and an eighth. Now that's quite a bit different than the other one. And so how is that important in terms of the construction? So that's so that it doesn't slip at the heel? Uh, yes, that's, that's actually true. Also too, we're gonna to be cutting paper patterns mm -hmm. and that short heel is used in certain aspects to get your foot. We, in a pull-on boot, we have, we have dual problems. We've gotta get your foot into the boot and then once your foot's into the boot, the boot has to fit. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have a problem of just getting you in. And so the short heel is going to come back and help us getting your foot into the boot. It'll come, and then as I descend the instep, that's when the measurements become relevant to the last. Okay. So the short heel is really used just to get you in and out of it. Okay. If that makes any mm -hmm. sense. 
And that's something that you'd see maybe like an English shoemaker using for a riding boot. Exactly, but yeah. And they would be measuring you different. For a riding boot. That, well, they would be measuring you at semi-weight bearing, mm -hmm. and, you're, and that would change everything. That would change all the measurements. Everything would expand. And so how much, it, you know, whenever you're kind of studying, because you've, you know, you've studied a lot in terms of, I guess, developing your method, how much of it is taking inspiration from shoemakers, taking inspirations from boot makers, or just completely developing your own technique? What, or what Charlie taught you? What, what you find out as a craftsperson, artist, anybody who makes anything, mm -hmm. is that you really need to focus uh, you need to pay attention to what other people are doing to find hints of how you might be able to use that knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then you basically take it back and you could call it wood shedding, where you're, you're using it, you're trying to see what works, what doesn't work, and you throw out the things that don't help you. So really, it, it's um, in, in the beginning, in the early, in the early years, you're more... Uh, you're being open to new methods and things mm -hmm. like that. And then as you, you, d you slowly develop your own style, you slowly find out what works, what doesn't work, what's necessary, what isn't necessary. Um, in the early days of measuring, I might have taken an hour to measure someone's feet, and they may have a plane to catch. Yeah. And so you've got to go ahead and f you, can't, you don't have the luxury of just spending oodles of time. Mm -hmm. So you really, so in the beginning you, you do pay attention to everybody and to all the things that are out there, every little nugget that you can find. And then you slowly learn what is relevant and what isn't. And of course the ultimate goal is the same thing. You want to make sure you do a good job. And that's what this is all heading towards, is, and, is for us to do a good job yeah. for you. Have you trained any other last makers? I, I have trained a few. This, uh, this is really, in my opinion, the hardest part. Is to, measuring the foot is not hard. Mm -hmm. It's taking that data and making a last. And I read a book that Ferragamo wrote called, um, shoe, what was called Shoemaker of Dreams. And in the book, he talks about the secret that he developed of fitting and how to make a shoe that fits so beautifully but he never tells you in the book. So okay. when I read that book, it was in 1986, well, number one, I was angry, because <laughs> I, w I was looking for the secret, and he didn't, he just, he kind of tantalized you that it mm -hmm. was there, but he didn't tell you what it was. But if I've, I've spent from 1986 till now finding the secret, and I did find it, but. You can't tell us. But <laughs> <laughs> not at this point. But, but maybe what it is is that, you know. Well, it'll be on your tombstone. <laughs> the secret is. Well, no, I've been, the people that work for me, Kirby, the people that work here, they all are part of it. Mm -hmm. And we show them, you know, all of the stuff that I've learned, I'm passing on to them. And so uh, the secret will be, they'll be shown yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be on my tombstone. And did Charlie share that with you? I mean, he. Charlie was an amazing fitter. And yes, he was very open about his techniques. And, uh, and any time I had a question, he answered them. But I've learned a lot also on yeah. my own. So my techniques are a combination of all of the years of just me mm -hmm. working as a bootmaker. Yeah. Um, I started in 1975. Wow, so you're going on, what, 40 years? Yeah, I, I haven't done the math. It's Sorry to do that for you. <laughs> that's okay. An incredible career, though. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, it's just, it really it just started out as something I wanted to do, and it's become a passion. Um, I mean, your Instagram page, I love following because, you know, it's very clear. You know, you've got the passion of, you know, really someone that's just big, keep beginning out, you know? Yeah. I mean, that, that uh, the fire and the intensity of the passion you can tell is still as strong today as you know, it is for many people whenever they just begin something. That's critical to keep that passion going because what happens is you keep learning, you keep getting better, you keep finding, you keep finding out little, little nuances and that, that's a continuous improvement. What challenges you? I mean, like what is it that, you know, kind of during your craft, whenever you get right, produces that kind of profound sense of satisfaction? Well, honestly, uh, Kirby, it's when, when I know that I can make a beautiful boot, but it's the fitting. That's the hard part. 
making sure that your boots fit properly. Everything just kind of is right there. It either does or it doesn't. So for me, uh, I, uh, I know I can make a beautiful, well-balanced boot, but the fit is the critical part. And so that's the challenge, mm -hmm. is to make sure they fit. And everybody's foot is different. Yeah. So it's a continuous challenge uh, to make sure that I do it right. And, and so I'm, when's the moment of, I mean, someone, I mean, I don't have your boots yet, right? So I don't, yeah. but is it, you know, whenever a customer puts on their boot for the first time, you can see it in their face? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm literally looking at their feet. Their feet, yeah. yeah but I'm trying not to. But be, you're feeling it, like you. Well, whenever I'm, the boots I'm, on, I'm trying can, not to be so obvious. Yeah. But I'm, well, I'm looking at their feet, and and of course I want them to be happy with it. But it really is. Everything just comes down to that one moment mm -hmm. where they try them on, and and if there's any, if you've done your if you've done your work right, the boots fit wonderfully, and they're going to be supportive and. And, and almost magical in terms of how they make your feet feel. And can you feel that or can you see it? You can feel it and see it. And see yeah. it. Now the last thing I'm going to measure on you, Kirby, is your leg. Okay. Um, I don't know how tall you want your boots to be, but the standard height is 12 inches. Okay. Do you feel you want, you know, I like a taller boot, but it is a personal preference. Have you thought about that? I haven't really thought of it. Okay. Um, I can give you a boot to try on. You can just see if it, I mean it won't fit you, but yeah. it'll be it'll be the right height. Okay. Do you want to do that, or do you want me just to measure your leg and you can see? We'll pull your pant legs up. I mean, so obviously a tall person might want a taller boot, um, it, it, but it does come down just to personal preference. I like the way a tall boot looks. Yeah, I think I might prefer a taller boot. Okay, so the <coughs> standard boot is going to be, and you just remain seated. Okay, sorry. The standard boot is 12 inches tall. And so 12 inches is going to hit you almost mid-calf. So there's 12 inches. So we could go up to 13, and that might be good. I'd probably go 13. You want to do 13? I mean, I like the idea of a formal boot, mm -hmm. you know, something that's a little dressier. Okay. If it's too tall, you might find that it's, uh, there's 13, and it hits you about mid-calf. You want to settle there? I think that, that looks good. Okay, so we're at 13. And so how do you determine how much allowance that you give the uh, top of the boot. I mean, basically, it's kind of like I, want, a I, I want to give you a half an inch over your leg measurement. Okay. Now, you will have some customers that will say, I want to tuck my pants in. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have to allow for that. So the standard is a half an inch over the leg measurement. Okay. Uh, I'll, you and will that would be to fit underneath a jean or exactly. a, or a trouser yeah, I mean, or something. Exactly. Yeah. You will have some customers that say, listen, you know, my legs are really skinny. Mm -hmm. uh, I always have problems with boots being extraordinarily loose. I want them tight fitting to my leg. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I'm going to do that. Um, but, but if you're doing but leg the, measurement plus half an inch. Yeah, that, always... that's, I'll let you pull that up, Kirby. Yeah. So, so pretty much it's just uh, it's a half an inch over the leg measurement. And that gives us a little bit of, uh, okay, so. So after I measure your leg, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, take an ink print of your feet, and that'll be used also in the last, okay. And the ink print is a reference point to the a load or the load bearing trace? The ink print is going to give me a border outline, mm -hmm. which is what I have already, and it's also going to give me a, a weight bearing part of the foot. Okay. And from the ink print, I can see the arch, I can see the structure of the foot, and that's going to help me do the bottom. So when I contour the bottom, I'm relying on the ink print. I'm relying on this too, but the ink print gives me more, more resolution, more yeah. depth. Yeah. Nowadays, uh, um, most people have abandoned the ink print, um, but you'll see shoemakers and bootmakers still using it. Why so would someone abandon the ink print? Just technology. Uh, nowadays, everything is, is Im 3D imaging. And I mean, as a bootmaker, uh, I need the clarity of the ink print. And I believe rubber was invented in 1836. And, uh, and as far as I know, the this came one year later. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. so all it is is a rubber bladder. Of course, of course back then, they didn't So bootmakers have been using this oh, yeah. since the 19th century. Yeah, absolutely, and they, there's different forms in which it's done, but mm -hmm. it's basically, I'm gonna ink this side, I'll put paper here, you'll stand on it, you'll push it. You've seen this before, right, Kirby? 
I have seen it have here. You, have you ever had anyone do it no. to you? Never? Not all the shoemakers? Never in all my life. Oh, that's interesting. I don't even know of a shoemaker that uses it. Really? Trick. Yeah. Now, you have the book Handmade Shoes for Men. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in that book, they're using this. The, so yeah. who, that's, uh, that's Laszlo Voss. Voss. Yeah, and so he's using it. But really, you're using it because you, you're looking for information. And this will give you the information you need. I'm using blue ink, and blue ink will give you, it, it'll be easier to read than if I was using black ink. Yeah, this, so it's, it's primitive technology. So I'm going to set your foot on it, Kirby, and then I'm just going to have you stand. There you go. Just stand with equal weight on each foot, and just try not to move. So we'll do a border outline of the foot, and I'm using a pencil, which is exactly what I use to trace your foot. And once again, I'm pressing down on all the toes to get full extension. And then I'm going to mark the same reference points that I did on the tracing. So this will show me things that I can't see with a traditional tracing. All right, go ahead and have a seat, please, and just lift your foot. There you go. So there's the great reveal. Oh, wow. So there we go. You, you'll notice how these two are very similar in terms of the inner weight bearing. So from this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find the metatarsals. And then okay. that'll give me the arch curve. Mm -hmm. And that'll if I saw any if I saw any darkness, that would be pressure, and it would I would want to work uh, to make sure that the bottom is sculpted to relieve the pressure. Um, so I mean, obviously there's darkness here, darkness there. Normally it's the foot's like a tripod, and so you got one, two, three, and I can see the there's the fifth metatarsal there. So when I get ready to use this, I'm going to find the I'm going to find all the metatarsals. I'm going to do I'll do a, yeah. a center line of the foot, and you've seen it on my Instagram, mm -hmm. right? So, um, but you can see things here that you cannot see here. Yeah. And so for me, I need that because mm -hmm. I'm trying to do a good job for you. And so whenever you're building the insole, you'll use that to kind of absolutely to kind of sculpt absolutely. Or, you know yeah. what is what's it called? Dig it out or. We'll, do, yeah. we'll, we'll go ahead and match uh, the bottom of the, the last to the bottom of your foot. Mm -hmm. And we'll be using primarily this, the information I gather from this. We had a, a, a young man who was here in 1991 from Munich, Germany, and he went through the, sh the German shoemaking program. And so he came here to learn to make cowboy boots. And so we had to do a curriculum with the German government they were dictating, uh, they wanted to know what he was going to be taught. This was a two and a half year program that we wow. did with him. And they even told us how much we had to pay him. Oh, really? Yeah, it was really. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, this guy was amazing. This, and he, of all the people that we've had here, he was the best. And where is he now? He lives here. Okay, in Austin? Yes. Is he doing boots? No, no. He, he said, uh, it was too difficult? Too difficult. Well, you <laughs> nailed it, Kirby. <laughs> I mean, but he was the best. I'm going to do the same thing to your other foot. Yeah. But I learned a lot from him, Kirby. What about the, I mean, I, you've had, I mean, you've had there people come in from go. all over the world. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Do you see a difference in like the Japanese versus the British versus? Oh, there's, yeah, there's absolutely, the Japanese are amazing. I mean, I've seen their work and it's just, it, it's hard to believe that a human being can achieve such levels of perfection. So they're, they're devoted to, to perfection. They're devoted to the, whatever they do, they just seem to do it uh, to a higher level. Um, and that's, that's very nice to see. It makes, it makes you feel good um, as, a, as, an, uh, as a craftsman to see somebody pour their, their whole being into it. Do you, do you find, I mean, do you think that someone can become too clinical about a, a craft? Uh, yeah, you absolutely can be too come, become too clinical. But if, if you're, like, we're in business, Kirby, and, and so you, 
you can't become so clinical that you just drive yourself out of business. So you ha so it's all rooted in practicality. Mm -hmm. And as long as we're rooted in practicality, it actually helps us to to not go too extreme. Now go ahead and have a seat and just lift your foot. There you go. So can you put it right here and then let's mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm I'm basically looking at this. And you can see the you can see the correlation between the tracing uh, that was done with a pencil and, you, and the use of the ink print. But the mm -hmm. ink print gives you more depth. Here, let's put that here. Yeah, that's, that's the way I would be using it, yeah, just like that. I want a center line. Okay. Okay, and the center line will be, you know, I'm going to measure across the heel to get a center point. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the, all the five metatarsals and I'll get a nice, I'll get some type of an arch curve. And then I'll connect the, this one to the to the other, and I'll I'll be able to see it, um, and that'll get that'll show me how the foot moves, um, and it'll show me uh, you know how to support you. So I'm looking for I'm looking for the there's the fifth metatarsal, there's the first metatarsal, and you can and see that. Just. I can see it, yeah. And then and then I, I'm looking for the others that that are in the middle, mm -hmm. and um, and so I can find the center of your toe and travel back to what, where the metatarsal is and that can give me an idea of the, sh of your, the bottom of your foot. So it's not an x-ray. Yeah. Mean, you know Kirby that at one point they were using x-rays in footwear. Okay. You've heard that story, right? I haven't. Yeah. And if you, if you meet somebody who's old enough, they remember running into a shoe store as a kid and putting their hand in the x-ray machine to see the bones. I mean, we've had customers tell us that. So, you know, you can go to, you, they, they were using it so that you could go ahead and x-ray the foot in the shoe and make sure it fit. Hmm. Much like today, you say they cut open the yeah. shoe and peer into it. So, um, of course, it's unhealthy. <laughs> so, but what I'm, but I'm, those are the things I'm looking for, Kirby. I'm looking for the metatarsals, looking for any undue pressure. And that's just helping the shoe be comfortable because, again, it, the yeah. fit and the balance yeah. of the last. And this is something you cannot go get in an off-the-rack shoe or boot. Mm -hmm. it, will, there, it will be missing. Yeah. Because the, the last is the key. And like the shoes you wore in today are beautiful. So the last is the key. Here's the last. And so I want the last uh, to basically represent the foot. And then we'll add the toe shape after. And of course, I'm going to do things to the last. Uh, I'm not basically taking a mold of your foot and mm -hmm. using it as is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and sculpt it. So it'll be, it'll be a, 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 a facsimile of your foot, but it won't be your foot. Okay. Yeah, but, but <coughs> you won't, you'll never get that in something off the rack. Yeah. And my point is this, everything that's made that you can just go in and buy off the shelf, it all started with the last. Well, the person who made the last if they didn't know their trade, uh, they would make a bad last, and then that would produce a bad shoe, and it would hurt the wearer. Well, and they have to produce a last that is general enough that it can fit 85% 85 85 of the population. Of all That's right. Feet. But so there's so many points of, of reference on the bottom uh, in the whole last that are just that lost. It, it, unless they are expert fitters they're not going to do a good job. So the last maker relies on the seller to tell them if it's a good fitter. And the, honestly, the seller doesn't know. So you have the blind and the blind. So yeah. what, as the maker, we can measure your foot, and we can sculpt the last to fit you. And that's the difference between bespoke and off the rack, is that it's the knowledge of the maker in the last yeah. Uh, and so even there within Bespoke, you have a continuum because there's a ton of custom boot guys. Right. You know, but it's like custom shirts. I mean, what does that mean? It's all about focus yeah. and it's what you focus on. So like uh, getting back to what I said, I know that we can make a beautiful boot. Mm -hmm. That part is relatively easy. Yeah. This is the hard part. Yeah. And so if I focus, if my energies are focused on the hard part, I'll have a better end result. Everything just kind of yeah. follows. So the last thing I need from you, Kirby, is your signature. And all that means is you are here. Oh, that's great. So, so this is, uh, there you go. And if you'll just give me your autograph right in there. And we're all done.
Okay. What's the date? July, no, September 21st? What's the date? 22nd? September 22nd, 2017. That's exciting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Kurt. Hey, Lee, thank right. you so, so much. So we're done with the yeah. fitting. Okay. So can, now we You can step on down. Yeah. There we are. So as you can see, you know, Lee has taken detailed measurements. And one of the questions I asked Lee is that how soon after taking these measurements, you know, do you really need to sit down and work on creating the last? And Lee said, you know, with the detailed measurements and the precisions and the, the thoroughness with which he does that, uh, he could take those measurements out of his file cabinet a year or two years from now and still make a last that's going to fit perfectly. And Lee, being particularly well known as such a great fitter, you can see that the, the detail and the precision of his measurements, you know, really do translate into a better quality last. So that was the first step. Next step in this process is to work with his uh, wife, Carolyn, to really determine uh, what the boot uh, design is going to look like. So uh, I'm gonna do that next. I'm Kirby Allison, founder of The Hanger Project, and here at The Hanger Project, we love helping the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. Please take a moment to visit hangerproject.com where you can view the most comprehensive and cohesive collection of luxury garment care and shoe care products in the world, as well as other accessories for the well-dressed. I'm Kirby Allison, founder of The Hanger Project, and thanks for joining us.